ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने मूर्ति भेद विभागिने यो मवत व्याप्त देहाय सदाशिव शंकराचार्य मध्यम चार्य वंदे गुरु परंपरा
परम भूय प्रवक्षा मुनय सर्वे परा सिद्धि मिथो कथा ज्ञानमुपाश्रित मम साधर्म्यमुपाश्रित सर्गे पीनोपचाते प्रलय नव्यथंति from today <coughs> from today we are going to start chaturdasha adhyaya 14th chapter and the name of the chapter is guna traya vibhag yoga yoga meaning we know the meaning is chapter vibhagah is a classification and traya means three guna means attribute so there are sattva rajas tamah the classification is has been described in this new chapter स्कूल गुण त्रय विभाग सो बिफोर एंटरिंग इन द फर्स्ट वर्स शंकराचार्य जी जस्ट गिवन द इंट्रोडक्शन इन द कॉमेंट्री वाई दिस चैप्टर शुड बी बिगन ही जस्ट गिवन सम यू नो सम आर्ग्यूमेंट सो शंकर इज ओनली वेरी स्मॉल कॉमेंट्री बट इट इज नाइस शंकराचार्य इज टोल्ड उत्पद्यम क्षेत्र क्षेत्र संयुगा शंकराचार्य से सर्व मीन्स एवरीथिंग उत्पद्यम विच इज क्रिएटेड विच इज बोर्न इन वॉट इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस एवरीथिंग विच इज बोर्न इज जस्ट बोर्न बिकॉज ऑफ क्षेत्र क्षेत्र संयोगा संयोगा द मीनिंग इज एसोसिएशन एसोसिएशन ऑफ क्षेत्र इन क्षेत्र वी नो द क्षेत्र इज अ फील्ड और वी कैन से क्षेत्र इज अ प्रकृति इन क्षेत्र इज द नोवर ऑफ द क्षेत्र मीन्स कॉन्शियस प्रिंसिपल द कॉम्बिनेशन एसोसिएशन बिकॉज ऑफ दिस सर्व उत्पद्यमान everything which is born in this creation is because of the association of the inert principle and conscious principle utpadyate it everything is born iti uktam it has been said uktam means it has been said whatever is 
created which everything which is manifested in front of us is nothing but the association of this both inner and conscious principle tat katham how can it possible iti tat pradarshanartham in this way in order to show that how tat means utpadyaman how everything is born because of the combination of both in order to show param bhuya ityadi adhyaya arabhyate <clears throat> and for this param bhuya because the first was begins with param bhuya so this whole chapter commencing the first was param means great bhuya again so here param bhuya is given that's why shankaracharya says this chapter is begun arabhyate the meaning is begun so first reason why bhagwan has started to teach because arjuna has not <coughs> asked anything but still bhagwan has started why to to show everything is born because of the combination of kshetra and kshetragna and there is then no role of kshetragna except lending the consciousness but the role of kshetra is possible only the association with kshetragna alone kshetra cannot do anything and second he says athava athava means there one more option why this chapter is begun to shankaracharya ji said ishvara paratantrayo ho kshetra kshetragnayo ho jagat karanatvam the jagat karanatvam the cause of this whole creation is because of the combination of kshetra and kshetragna but is if we ask the kshetra and kshetragna association is independent so they say no ishvara paratantrayo ho the kshetra and combination of kshetra and kshetragna are dependent on ishvara it cannot just abruptly born everything it is a we can say it is a whole creation is born with thoughtful process it is abruptly whole universe is born is not like that and that's why he says natu sankhyanam eva svatantra yoho iti evam artham so sankhya naam this is another darshan shastra it's called philosophy according to philosophy of sankhya they say according to them i can say according to them they say there are two thing is a parallel thing one is called prakruti in another is called purusha both are parallel reality so when dissolution time we used to say only consciousness is there but this sankhya philosophy says there are two independent reality and they always available separate separate this is the philosophy of sankhyana so according to them prakruti also we say prakruti is inert it cannot do anything without the presence of consciousness but according to them prakruti is independent it can do anything and purusha is conscious principle it doesn't do anything this is the theory of sankhya so i have just to show you in this whole darshan shastra this there are six astika six nastika philosophy so the astika when we say astika the meaning of astika means one who is accepted our scriptures veda is a means of knowledge is called astika 
generally in here people think astika means who is re- ready to accept ishwara <clears throat> but in it not like that one who is ready to accept scriptures veda is a means of knowledge are called astika and according to this astika they have given six types of philosophy so one is called nyaya nyaya shastra and nyaya shastra is created by muni gautama it is a full of logic nyaya another is called sankhya shastra many time in upanishad even gita sometime we follow which we are discussing here according to sankhya purush and prakruti are different so this is called sankhya and the one who is created this kapila muni in bhagavata it comes in fifth chapter i think kapila muni another third philosophy is called yoga yoga darshan shastra and it is created by patanjali rushi <clears throat> it is called created by patanjali rushi fourth one is called vaisheshika it's called kanada rushi the founder is called kanada rushi this four philosophy and last two are purva mimamsa is called ved purva bhaga is created by jemini rushi in interesting is jemini rushi is a student of vedavyasa and uttar mimamsa another name is called vedanta and who is the founder vedavyasa rushi so in this way the six philosophy and on which base they have given six different type of philosophy according to them the definition of moksha is different vedanta say here only non dual by knowing oneself we, we become one with this is our and this is called moksha but they have their own philosophy of moksha on that base in same upanishad same vedas mantra they have taken but they have created different so these are called six astika philosophy and six nastika philosophy if we say one is called charvaka charvaka thinks you know eat drink and marry we don't know there is a no rebirth grutam ऋणम कृत्वा घृतम पिबेद दिस इज दिस थियरी जस्ट एन्जॉय द लाइफ वी डोंट नो वॉट विल हैपन टू नेक्स्ट सो एन्जॉय द लाइफ नथिंग विल हैपन अनदर इज कॉल्ड जैन थियरी एकॉर्डिंग टू जैन दिस ऑल पीपल आर नॉट रेडी टू एक्सेप्ट अवर स्क्रिप्चर्स एज ए मीन्स ऑफ नॉलेज एज ए प्रमाण जैन थियरी according to jain atma is our body size our atma is very ashuddha according to them that's why they keep on doing different type of tapas if you do tapas then atma is pure ekasra and they are left lot of and another is called bauddha theory in bauddha there are total four madhyamika shunya flickers there are their own theory so total six astika sixth nastika darshan shastra or philosophy among them shankaracharya is men- mentioning sankhya now sankhya is who is a kapila muni and according to them prakruti is also separate from purusha it can take separate decision according to them and that's why they have written in kshetra kshetragna yoho association of this both kshetra and kshetragna is depends on ishvara paratantra paratantra is dependent on someone 
ಜಗತ್ಕಾರ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ಎಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಜ್ಞ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕೋಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಜಗತ್ ಬಟ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಜ್ಞ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆನ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಸೊ ಈಶ್ವರ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ನ ತು ಲೈಕ್ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಜಗತ್ ಕಾರಣ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಪುರುಷ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕಂಬೈನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ನೋ ಈಶ್ವರ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ನ ತು ಸಾಂಖ್ಯಾನ ಇವ ಸ್ವತಂತ್ರಯೋ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಎಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ದೇ ಸೇ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದೇಟ್ ಇನ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವ ಜಗತ್ ಕಾರಣ ಇಸ್ ಎಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಜ್ಞ ಬಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆನ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾವು ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸೊ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಕಾರಣ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲಿ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಕಾರಣ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಸ್ಥಸ್ತ್ವ ಗುಣೇಶು ಸಂಗ ಸಂಸಾರ ಕಾರಣ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಆಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕೋಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸೊ ಇ ಸೇಸ್ ಸಂಗ ಎಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಎಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ವಾಟ್ ಸೊ ಎಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಗುಣ ಸತ್ವ ರಜಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ತಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೇರ್ ಡಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗುಣಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಸೊ ಇ ಸೇಸ್ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಸ್ವಂ ತ್ವಂ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿಯ ತಿಷ್ಠಂತಿ ಯಾಹ ಗುಣ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಅಬಾಯ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಆರ್ ಕೋಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಸ್ಥಂ ಗುಣ ದಿಸ್ ಗುಣ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಕೋಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂ ಸಂಸಾರ ಕಾರಣ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಕೋಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸಂಗ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಎಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ಸಂಗ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಗ್ರೋಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಈಸ್ ಮೇಡಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಫ್ಸ್ ಎ ತಮೋ ಗುಣ ದ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ವಿತ್ ಬಾಡಿ is called sangha our mind consider i am this is called sangha the dehatma buddhi with our body mind sense complex because body mind sense complex are nothing but only guna and total considering oneself as a body mind sense complex is only sansara karana is the cause of all sansara and in this chapter what bhagwan will tell to us to so shankaraje is given some brief he says iti uktam sansar karam iti uktam is a said par kasmin gune katham sanga in which guna means attribute which type of association keva guna what are the names of this guna ha ಕಥಂ ವಾ ತೇ ಬದ್ನಂತಿ ಹೌ ತೇ ಬೈಂಡಸ್ ಇತಿ ಗುಣೇಭ್ಯ ಚ ಮೋಕ್ಷಣ ಕಥಂ ಸ್ಯಾತ್ ಹೌ ಕೆನ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಗುಣ ಥ್ರೀ ಗುಣಾಸ್ ಗುಣಾತೀತ ಹೌ ಕೆನ್ ವಿ ಕಮ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಗುಣಾತೀತ ಮೋಕ್ಷಣ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ರಿಲೀಸಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಥಂ ಸ್ಯಾತ್ ಮುಕ್ತ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ of a person who is already released from this guna vaktavyam iti artha to bhagwan has discussed all this that's why this chapter is very much important so just we will see later also but i what bhagwan has discussed in this chapter i would like to show so here bhagwan will discuss what is the nature of sattva guna rajo guna tamo guna bhagwan will discuss so nature will discuss swabhavam prakruti method of binding how can sattva guna rajo guna and tamo guna bind us how can they bind they also bhagwan has discuss what are the indication we say fever is there there is indication there must be some problem inside the body so fever even fever or we can say this less appetite diarrhea all are indication symptoms 
same way what are the symptoms of if we say if we would like to know whether in me sattva guna is predominant in me rajo guna predominant or tamo guna this all indications or symptoms are also discussed in this chapter even a person who dies at the time of death with sattva guna predominance then where person will go is also discussed at the time of death if rajo guna is predominant where will go is discussed and same with tamo guna and result of guna if what is the result of sattva guna what is the result of rajo guna and what is the result of tamo guna is also discussed and what is born of which guna if sattva guna is then what is born if rajo guna is there what is born and if tamo guna is there what is born everything is discussed detail in this chapter that's why this is very much important this 14th chapter so this shankara chaiz is discuss here kasmin gune katham sangah ke va gunah katham va te badnanti gune bihacha mokshanam katham muktasya lakshanam one two three four five even indication is not written everything bhagwan is discuss in brief also and at the same time we can understand so with this now we can go in first verse shri bhagwan uvach bhagwan spoke bhagwan has said and he says param bhuyah प्रवक्ष्यामि ज्ञानानां ज्ञानमुत्तमं यच् ज्ञात्वा मुनयः सर्वे पराम सिद्धिम इदो गताः सो परम भूयः प्रवक्ष्यामि सो इफ वी से द मेन वर्ब इज भू प्रवक्ष्यामि वक्ष्यामि वी कैन से आई विल टेल आई शैल टेल बट व्हेन pro prefix is added the meaning is i will tell you in detail or very clearly so i shall tell you very clearly so bhagwan has said i will tell you very clearly so if arjuna is asked this is discussed first time bhagwan say no bhuyah again i will discuss the meaning it has been discussed many time before this chapter so bhagwan has discussed many time and what bhagwan is going to tell you arjuna he says gnana nam gnanam pravakshyami i am going to tell you the knowledge among the old discipline of knowledge that knowledge i will tell you and he has used two adjective of this gnanam this knowledge this gnanam is uttamam the meaning of uttamam is the best or most profound this gnanam i will tell you it is most profound and param param is it is the ultimate so both so he is bhagwan says there are many type of disciplines of knowledge among this all discipline this gnanam means brahma vidya the knowledge of self again i will tell you because this knowledge is most profound and this knowledge is ultimate having got this knowledge we just all complexes will go which available inside in mundaka it says vidyate hridaya granthi chidyante sarva sanshayah tasmin drishte paravare and chidyante sarva sanshayah so having known this gnanam vidyate hridaya granthi all complexes will go inside our heart chidyante sarva sanshayah all our doubts will go complexes will go doubt will go chitrate sir and 
what was the third one tasmin drishte paravare having understood the whole knowledge everything will go even karma will uh, just asya karmani all karmas pap punya will go by knowing this knowledge that's why bhagwan says it is uttama so i would like to show you i have prepared one so i just written there are two type of knowledge one knowledge is called aparagnana and another knowledge is called paragnana aparagnana are are all academic aparagnana are all religious practices aparagnana even is called knowledge of veda aparagnana even interesting it is a knowledge of upanishad also it is aparagnana and this help to have a degree of intellectual and fundamental attitudes and uh, aparagnanam under comes even amanitvam adambitvam so why aparagnanam even upanishad same mundaka it was one discussion it says why upanishad knowledge consider is aparagnan because in mundaka this it is a dialogue between shaunaka and angiras to angiras says to shaunaka aparagnanam he says all four vedas plus six shad angas to know this vedas there are discipline of other knowledge all are called apara so when it says even vedas are aparagnanam upanishad comes under veda all we are studying chandogya everything then why it consider is a aparagnan to shankara chaye discuss very beautifully in mundaka he says whatever available in the words of upanishad it is a information about who we are but when click comes i am all pervading consciousness that understanding only is called paragnan so the meaning of paragnanam is only the click happens like when we say if puja swami ji used to say if our eye is okay there is a no glasses and if elephant is front of us immediately we say oh elephant when we say elephant it is a click in our mind same way when teacher is teaching when student is listening and in student's mind oh this is me this is called opera so opera is nothing but when gnanam utpadyate in our mind this is called paragnanam everything are consider as a opera so even upanishad everything is called opera but why opera is necessary so it's preparing person for the paragnan this all discipline or japa meditation everything is helpful to the person or we can say mumukshu jignasu for the self knowledge so self knowledge requires some preparedness so here <clears throat> bhagwan is praising the knowledge that's why he says there are many knowledge but he has used you know so he says this gnanam is uttama and this gnanam is param the meaning is it is the most profound and it is ultimate knowledge all other gnanam i always says there are many knowledge or uh, faculty of knowledge are available but having studied this knowledge always we feel i don't know much even any faculty we if we take biology chemistry physics even nowadays before many maybe 20 years or maybe 40 years md person you know, if medicine person is md in science or doctor he they say oh he has studied too much but now in medicine there are many faculty is available 
if if we say ms with ophthalmology is ultimate oh he is a master he is ophthalmology now in it is a retinologist is a corneologist they are different type and still if we meet them this people or doctor we say everything is now nice you know he says i know only about retina i don't know much about cornea i don't know about much cataract so this much when we know much we know we come to know we don't know many things that's why upper agnanam always give this uh, you know the tendency to make us more and more guilty we don't know much but when we know who am i all complexes will go that's why it says uttamam is the best and ultimate by knowing this whether we know whether we don't know about aparagnanam we never create any complex no superiority complex no inferiority complex we know this is that's why bhagwan says this is the best knowledge so the here the knowledge is brahma vidya the knowledge of brahman the knowledge of atma or knowledge of self all are one and same this knowledge is the best among all knowledge that knowledge bhagwan says pravakshyami i am going to tell you this is called one type of glorification of brahma vidya this one and two verse in this 14th chapter is called glorification of self knowledge it is even i used to say it is one type of advertisement whenever we see in the tv more more advertise come and when we see advertise of some you know powder detergent powder we, one time we think let me use advertisement is nothing but it just create some inside us we should use it same way bhagwan is glorify glorifying this knowledge atmagnanam why people are interested it is one type of you know advertisement people come more to know this brahmagnanam that's why in second line if some if arjuna ask if i have atmagnanam what will happen tell me what i will get the bhagwan says yad gnatva knowing which gnatva means knowing yat it is a yat only yad gnatva knowing which sarve munayah all sages munayah shankaracharya ji always love sanyasi in his mind but munayah swami ji used to say when munayah come so we can include both grihastha also and sanyasi also because grihastha can also be muni the me, the definition of muni is mananat muni one who can do contemplation are called muni and even sanyasi can do contemplation same way even grihastha can that's why muni here include both householders as well as all sanyasis that's why he says sarve munaya including both householder and sanyasi itam itah gatah so he says when they come out from this body itah means from this body when they come out param siddhi gatah we can say param siddhi means ultimate accomplishment attained the meaning they are released from the cycle of birth and death it is called param siddhi param is called ultimate siddhi is called accomplishment gatah attained and there is one itah itah means asmat dehat vinirmukta when they are come out from this body they will get attain ultimate accomplishment by the name of moksha the meaning of siddhi is not anima mahima lagima but we can call as a moksha this is the meaning of verse shankaracharya has given very nice explanation on this
सो फर्स्ट वन इज परम तो एक्चुअली परम इज द एडजेक्टिव ऑफ ज्ञानम सो परम ज्ञानम शुड बी दे उत्तम ज्ञानम शुड बी दे तो दिस परम एंड ज्ञानम देर आर मच देर इज अ डिस्टेंस दैट्स वाई शंकर इज रिटर्न इन हिज कॉमेंट्री फर्स्ट सेंटेन्स इज परम ज्ञानम व्यवहितेन संबंध व्यवहितेन मीन्स डिस्टेंट देर इज अ संबंध दे आर कनेक्टेड बट दे आर सेपरेट सेपरेट बिकॉज इन संस्कृत वी कैन राइट एनी वेर एनी थिंग दैट्स वाई परम ज्ञानम दिस परम विल कनेक्टेड विथ ज्ञानम इट इज व्यवहित बिकॉज वन टू थ्री देर आर थ्री वर्ड्स इन बिटवीन दिस इज कॉल देर इज अ गैप अ डिस्टेंस बिटवीन परम ज्ञानम बट वन हैज टू अंडरस्टैंड परम गोज अलॉन्ग विथ ज्ञानम नाउ शंकराज इज एक्सप्लेनिंग भूय मीन्स अगेन भूय इज इक्वल टू पुनः शंकर एंड वाई पुनः शंकर एक्सप्लेन पूर्वेशु सर्वेशु अध्यायेशु इन बिफोर वॉट एवर वी हैव सीन ऑल चैप्टर्स हैव गोन बाय पूर्वेशु इन प्रीवियस सर्वेशु ऑल अध्यायेशु चैप्टर्स देर इज अ वन वर्ड इन संस्कृतम सकृत which is written here the meaning of sakrut is one time but when a sakrut is not one time many times so sri shankara says says in previous many chapters a sakrutam many time bhagwan has spoken about atmagnanam we can say in second chapter bhagwan has given atmagnanam from 11 to 24 verse In third chapter also a little bit atmagnanam. In fourth chapter is also atmagnanam. In fourth one a karma ni karma ya pashyet karma ni cha karma ya. In fifth chapter also atmagnanam. Even sixth chapter also atmagnan. Even after thirteenth all chapter almost this is called purvesh to sarveshu adhyayeshu many time uktam api. Even though Bhagwan has told this. सेल्फ नॉलेज असकृत मेनी टाइम उत्तम अपी इवन इट इज मेन्शन मेनी टाइम इवन दो अपी मीन्स इवन दो प्रवक्षा मी आई विल गोइंग टू टेल एंड वाई भगवान इज कीप ऑन टेलिंग अगेन इन अगेन तो ही से तच्च परम पर वस्तु विषयत्वात बिकॉज दिस ज्ञानम इज परम This again, Param Shankara says, explain. That is Param. This is the ultimate. And why? Para vastu vishayatvat. Vastu is the original reality. Whenever vastu comes, no, the vastu doesn't mean it is an object, but vastu is called reality. So it is the ultimate reality. Being the subject matter is ultimate reality. This knowledge is Param. Bhagwan says, and what is this gnanam? So he says, keep that gnanam, keep that gnanam. What about that gnanam? He says, gnanam, sarve sham gnana nam, uttamam. This knowledge among all type of nana nam, different type of knowledge, this is the best, most profound. Why? He says. उत्तम फलत्वात बिकॉज बाय नोइंग यू कैन गेट द बेस्ट रिजल्ट यू आर कम आउट फ्रॉम ऑल डाउट्स यू आर कम आउट फ्रॉम ऑल कॉम्प्लेक्सेस एंड द बेस्ट इज यू आर कम आउट फ्रॉम पुनरपि जननम पुनरपि मरणम द साइकल ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ व्हाट एल्स वी मीट दैट्स वाई सेज दिस इज द बेस्ट नॉलेज and shankaraj has mentioned even in previous chapter arjuna has gna ask what is gnanam what is gneyam so gneyam is called conscious principle
बट ज्ञानम शं भगवान स्टैकने से अमानित्व मदम बित्वम अहिंसा शांति राजव दिस इज आर मीन्स ऑफ नॉलेज दैट शंकराज इज मेन्शन ज्ञाना नाम देर आर मेनी नॉलेज न अमानित्वादीना किम तरह यज्ञादि ज्ञेय वस्तु विषया बिकॉज दिस अमानित्व अदम बित्व प्रिपेर द पर्सन इवन दो वी कैन से अमानित्व इज ओनली अपरा विद्या तो स्टील देर आर हेल्पफुल फॉर टू प्रिपेरिंग ए माइंड एंड अनदर शंकराज भी बिकॉज एट द टाइम यज्ञादि ज्ञेय वस्तु विषय there are many rituals are available in the previous part of veda and gneya means if you want to child means some then putra kamesti so we should know which are the all ingredients what are the priest even we would like to go after death swarga then what is we have to do all details are given in this previous these are called gnana nam there are many knowledge are available science are available many science philosophy are available but this is the best gnana atma vidya this knowledge yagnadi vishayar tane na mokshaya this rituals knowledge even now we can say the faculty of different type of physics chemistry biology even many you know literature philosophy tani na mokshaya this knowledge cannot give our liberation idam tu but this idam gnanam tu mokshaya but this gnanam para vidya is meant for liberation only iti and that's why bhagwan has used two visheshana means two adjective para uttama shabdabhyam stoti so bhagwan himself just glorifies of this gnanam by using two words and what are the name of these two words so he says one is para we know the meaning of para is ultimate in uttama is written the meaning of uttama is most profound the best by using two word shabda abhyam stauti bhagwan glorifies this atma gnanam why if somebody asks shankara ji has replied shrotru buddhi ruchi utpadana utpadanartham shrotru buddhi the buddhi of listener shrotru means listener buddhi their intellect utpadanartha they create some interest in listener this side type of advertisement this both mantras or both shlokas sorry are meant to develop more and more interest in atma gnana this is called shrotru buddhi ut utpadanartha बुद्धि ही उच्च लेट मी से वॉट इज दिस श्रोत्रु बुद्धि ही रुचि देर इज अ रुचि उत्पादनार्थ रुचि मीन्स इंटरेस्ट टू क्रिएट द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द लिसनर ऑफ दिस लिसनर एंड जे साई भगवान से इफ if we study chemistry physics biology what will happen complex will come if we are not ready we are not mature then some complex will come but if you study this atma gnanam then what will come that's why it says yat gnatva knowing which yat means which yat gnatva knowing which knowledge gnanam which atma gnanam gnatva here not only gnatva but we can say having understood properly this there are many people why i keep on telling there are many people who knows upanishad very well 
they are well versed in gita they can give and even lectures in upanishad and even gita but still they are taking sleeping pills if they are taking anti depression tablet the meaning is they have not assimilated the knowledge so whenever such word comes gnatva the meaning is i always says the meaning of gnatva means having assimilated this is not at informative base assimilated this knowledge like hasta malakatva even if we keep ambalaka means this berry in our hand we can see clearly oh this is the berry fruit same way when shastra says you are only consciousness we know this body mind sense complex is given to me i am not this one who is 100% clear it is called assimilated assimilated then there is a no complex more i am the body mind sense group prapya having as a assimilated this there are many munaya so what is the meaning of munaya that's why shankara says written sanyasina manana shila he likes all renunciate but sanyasina but in manana shila ha we can say is a householder one who can sit and contemplate anybody can come is called manana shila this all sages serve param siddhi the ultimate accomplishment and what is the name of this ultimate accomplishment is called moksha akya still always even many time i have told but somebody says you will be released then question will come moksha kasmat moksha kasmat moksha uchyate from which you would like to come out so generally we say samsara we would like to come out from sansara immediately we start sansara means birth cycle but they say what is the definition of sansara to so in shankaracharya says the vyakhya of sansara is aham esham mama ate this is called sansara aham esham i belongs to this people in whatever the problems of this people my relatives problem is my problem aham mama ate ate this people are belongs to me and i am belongs to them and this is called sansara the sansara means all our complexes in our mind is called sansara sansara is not moksha is not coming after death we are going some place no the meaning of san- moksha means sansarat moksha and sansara means the complexes which are available in our mind is only in after if we are come out from all complexes we can happily live in our sansara so all pain which is emotional pain are called sansara this is param siddhim in this param siddhim is called moksha akya by the name of moksha and when a person is accomplished this itah itah the meaning asmat asmat deha bandhanat and after this the bondage of deham after death urdvah after death gataha praptah there attain urdva the meaning of urdva i can say they are became one with all pervading consciousness many time i have says if wave is awakened is enlightened no if wave is enlightened where wave knows i am a mere water h2 and when even in the form of wave when it's broken i am h2 i will be one become ocean this is h2 this is called moksha of one wave this understanding way same way a person who knows i am a all pervading consciousness i am not body mind sense complex one who knows clearly 
that person after death he will be one with all pervading consciousness that's why it says urdhvam means they go gataha praptaha then for such person there is a no rebirth and even this it's given if they would like to come again they can come because they can enjoy the life there is a no problem in their life they can come but they are come out from all problems why because of this knowledge only and in next verse also bhagwan has praises or glorified this gnanam again he says this will so tomorrow but bhagwan has says idam gnanam upashritya mam sadharmyam agataha sarge api na upajayante pralaye navyathanti cha having surrender having resorted to this knowledge so they become one with me and they never reborn at the time of creation they never even destructed at the time of resolving so this is the meaning of first verse any problem or any question no question shall we do purnamada om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamasya purnamevavashishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om thank you swamini ji thank you matangi ji how are you thank you swamini ah doing fine